Василинка його і простатіння по себе. Це наша остання сесія. Я вважаю, що коли я не буду лінка скрибати англійською, я скажу, що простатка мене сакість. And I'm um, the main person here, probably the main person here who is quite unable to speak in English, although I can understand uh, what others are telling me. I will try to summarize my own impressions about um, our event. We were supposed to discuss how strong we are together and um, how strong we aren't when we aren't together. I do believe this is what we've been talking about. Although, of course, uh, um, we were definitely not able to solve the dilemma. But luckily, we're, we're not um, the Council of Europe. If the Lord above would now examine our kidneys, as the Old Testament says that uh, the Lord is examining people's kidneys, I'm pretty sure that in all of our kidneys, uh, he would find Ukraine after all. Even though uh, the word itself uh, was not necessarily mentioned in every presentation. I would really love it for us not to have to speak about Ukraine again the next year. But I think that regardless of uh, the development of the war and uh, its possible and impossible endings, and even in the most successful case, Uh, we will still have Ukraine in our kidneys, even though I cannot tell you the next year's topic uh, yet today. Tai čia mano toks bendras apibūdinimas, galbūt Jogiliai galėtų pasakyti, kaip jį patyvertų. Paskui prašysim visus mūsų pranešėjus apie tai pasisakyti. So, that's my own um, brief um, summary of our forum and I would ask Jogiliai to give her own um, impressions and then we will ask all the other presenters to say a few words. Can I speak in English, yes, please? Uh, thank you. Uh, I did not expect the microphone so soon, but I can improvise. So, uh, stronger together. So for me, most important and interesting part was about being together. How can we be together? That means not only to communicate what we felt and what we experienced, but how to actually be together with as equal partners uh, with other countries and that's actually the thought that I had for a long time and this event confirms in me that that uh, 30 years have passed we have created as Lithuanians, we have created a strong state I think there 
there's a need to move forward, to feel as secure, normal, post-traumatic state, to be able to equally participate in all the deba uh, debates, to get over post communist transformation, and to influence European decisions. That's how I see it. Uh, and I think this war, horrible war, was a great opportunity to be finally heard and finally to be able to take responsibility for the whole region. Not the Eastern European region. I think it's getting less and less relevant to think in terms of Eastern European or Western Europe, but to be able to be equal country of Europe. And I think it's really important. I think it's immense shift of perspective and identity. And that's actually the lesson that I, or thought, that I confirmed for myself in this event. That would be my summary. Chantal? What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> Very difficult to say. Uh, when I see the face of Munch mm -hmm. uh, and all the things, as I watch the, uh, I see uh, it's difficult for us, uh, for French people, to understand uh, at the first moment how you are scared about Russia. And uh, because we are so far, huh? so near to Atlantic and to America, huh? that uh, we are astonished to, to see. And uh, it's difficult for us to go to return to France and to explain they are scared. And uh, they, they, it's normal. It's difficult to explain. Uh, that is uh, that is what I think when, when I am here. Well, uh, sorry, I, I will start with the war again. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, uh, the war in Ukraine uh, woken up Europe and forced Europe to think again about uh, values of liberties and democracy because. Before this war, uh, Europe was uh, self-confident, self-sustained, and Angela Merkel was doing business with Putin happily after annexation of Crimea yes. and after uh, the beginning of the war in Donbass. So, in fact, uh, I would prefer you to keep uh, uh, Ukraine not in kidneys but in hearts. Uh, but first of all, uh, every European country should defend uh, democratic values and ne never forget about them dealing with countries which are just dangerous for the mankind. And uh, the more we talk about this, the more chances are that actually that Europe uh, will not fall asleep again uh, 10 years after this war. So uh, healthy sleep is good but only uh, when people are asleep, not when the states and the governments and the politicians. Yeah. Sorry. As we were talking about the Dailininkų, what kind of vignette to make this year? Forum. I must um, interfere here because we had quite a discussion with the artist, the designer, about the uh, artwork to be used for this year's forum. As you can see, um, the posters of the forum, uh, they are designed by Jakubas Jatsovskis. That's a a familiar name to Lithuanians here, probably. Uh, and he's always using a classical painting, a classical European painting uh, for the poster uh, of, of each year. Ir variantas, kurį pirmiausia Jokupas mums atsiuntė, tikriausiai būtų galbūt būtų pradžiuginės, nesu garantuotas, būtų pradžiuginės šantai. And uh, the first version that 
Jacobus uh, centers. Um, I can't be exactly sure, but I suspect that uh, Chantal would have liked it very much. It was the uh, Delacroix, uh, the uh, French Revolution with a, a flag over barricade. I had doubts. Uh, and I wrote um, to Jakubas uh, quite spontaneously that maybe in that case Goya is a better choice and the particular painting which I'm not sure of the title in English that sleep of mind gives birth to monsters or something like that uh -huh. Uh, they pursued that idea to sort of say, "No, no, 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 and so it's so nice to hear now Andre speaking about avoiding the sleep of mind. So it means that we made the correct poster. Now moving on. Thank you. I talked about the traumas and other serious subjects, so let me, I will take uh, liberty to say something on a different note. Uh, because the idea came to my mind at lunch <laughs> that at the same time it's a paradox of this situation that we are so afraid of uh, losing the states again to get, we would like to get out of the trap of history, as it was called before 1989. But at the same time, we, have, we are experiencing something unprecedented. Poles and Lithuanians alike. You know what? It's the first time since the partitions of Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth that the whole generation was born and brought up in their own country. Since the 18th century, nothing of that kind happened. That's the miracle against the background of history. Our own past, it's something that our grandmothers, grandfathers, grand grand grandmothers <laughs> dreamt of. And it's happening. We rarely see it because it's a process. It did not take place before 1939 because it's a generation means 25 years, according to sociological criteria. And we have it now. So at the same time, we are experiencing this geopolitical existential fear. But in front of our eyes, something unprecedented happens. The generation of Lithuanians and Poles are born and brought up in their own independent countries. That's the beauty of history as well. Thank you. Thank you. They say it's uh, very good to be the last because uh, you can just summarize what everybody else has said and then say, let's go have dinner together. Uh, but um, I'll, I'll try to, to add uh, uh, something. I, I agree with you that, that, uh, that we are scared. And um, I think that we are a little bit too scared and uh, I think uh, what, what I was trying to say in my presentation, uh, I, I said that uh, uh, people always talk about learning from history but never do and um, still when you are a historian you would wish for, for people to learn at least a little bit from, from history. So uh, I think, I think um, 
maybe the main lesson for, for the present day is that uh, all these things, war and, and, uh, um, and fear and, and, uh, uh, and threats, uh, it's not the first time that, that it is happening in, in Europe. And, uh, and uh, it's it's not the first time, not not only for the for the east of Europe, but it's not the first time for the west of Europe as well. It's it's um, uh, we I think we've been through this maybe maybe not as together as together as as, as we are today, but uh, in a way we we've been through this together. Uh, during the, the 20th century and, and I think uh, in that sense we all, all of us are, are well prepared for, uh, for, for the present situation and um, personally I, I have no doubt that we will prevail uh, but yeah we'll see. Tai dabar nežinau, kaip mes dviesim moderuosim. Leisti tau. Tai aš jau atlikau tada savo mažinį. Once again, I have to improvise now. I wanted to proceed with the perspective from the West and East, but I think it's too difficult having only uh, Chantal actually representing the West. Uh, but the question that I think I was asking on all the presentations and I still struggle with is how to, um, and that's what I want to ask you, um, how can we engage in dialogue? How can we engage in uh, dialogue as equal partners? Uh, not as victims, not the only ones who experience the war, not neglecting that the West also experience the war. How can we have dialogue between those different countries? Not only what I'm trying to imagine is going beyond communicating our traumas or beyond communicating our fears but into dialogue. I know it, it might be sound naive or idealistic but I'm young enough to be idealistic and um, one of the places or I think we discussed that in one of the presentations is that actually the Brussels, which is so evil in uh, many mm, discourses, is actually one of the places where you can have debate, where you can have influence, at least from the Lithuanian perspective, that's the place where you can have effect. Um, what do you think about where are the places for meetings? Where are the places and how the dialogue can be created? Thank you. Uh, I think um, in the West we have lost uh, the sense of tragic. Um, the beginning of the war of Ukraine was in February 22. And just after, three days after, I went to the grocer to visit to buy vegetables and I speak always with the grocer, which is sympathetic. And he told me, oh, it is incredible. I thought it would never, never, never be a war now. You see in which illusion we were. And so I think we have now to recognize something which was uh, incredible. And if we recognize it, uh, it begins, uh, we will be on the same place mm -hmm. of you. Yes. Okay. 
just a sh short addition. I, I, I don't know about the places where... <laughs> where, where Bar is not a bad place for, for dialogue uh, anytime uh, of, of day or night. Uh, but um, I think one, one way to answer this uh, challenge is uh, to, to remember the common goals that, uh, that we had historically. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's something a little bit forgotten because um, after the Second World War, the, the uh, liberation and the unification of Europe, it was, it was not only the concern of, of, the, of the occupied states, of, of uh, the states un, under the Soviet influence, it was, it was also uh, the concern of, of, the, of the newborn Western world. And uh, it was a common goal, and uh, and uh, many efforts were put into to achieve this goal i mean in diplomatic efforts intelligence efforts uh, all kinds of of uh, pressure and 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 uh, very clever moves uh, short of war short of war yes uh, but 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 there there were a lot of efforts put put in, in, in this common goal and uh, it is something that we have achieved actually it's that we, we should be a little bit more proud I think of, of, of the moment in, in which we are because we, we have achieved this goal and, and we have a, a, a un, unified Europe as, as we imagined it uh, as, as it's supposed to be uh, so, so I think I think we can find uh, commonality and strength in 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 this acknowledgement of uh, of achievement and 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 we have to believe that that we are prepared and and, and we have enough uh, potential to uh, to deal with with the present threats together. Yeah, pass the microphone. Uh, well, uh, if you come to any village in the United Kingdom, uh, you will find at least one so-called political club of Liberal Party or Conservatives where everyone can enter and uh, the party member on duty should make tea and have conversation and answer all the questions. And I think actually, uh, I mean, Europeans should be much more politicized because every country has internal problems with far right or far left. And far right parties were for 20 years financed from Russia everywhere, including Greece, Italy, Austria, etc. There is a book about this written and published, I think, also in, in German and other languages by Anton Shekhovtsov, Ukrainian professor who teaches somewhere in Europe. So, I mean, we need normal political dialogues and conversations on the grass level. Only then, actually, you can be sure that people will understand in which direction their country is moving and what is happening to the world around. Thank you. Uh, well, you have referred to the Cold War era. The, the reminder of the, of, the, of the times is that, in fact, what pushed people to the dialogue was the sense of danger, almost permanently. So what would be unpardonable was, would be that while having the imminent danger in the region, we would turn our backs to the dialogue. So I fully agree this is like the moment that we should follow this pattern of dialogue because we are in danger. That's one part of the story. But another thing is that uh, mm, if we are talking about the, the, there are many enemies of the dialogue. And uh, as always, we have uh, 
the past experiences that should be taken into, con into consideration, but we have always also the challenges ahead of us. And one of the challenges that should make us modest, because we don't, we still don't know how to cope with it, is that uh, those who you mentioned, the, the far right, the, the far left, the, 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 the point is that we are living in the in, in the times where our enemies don't want the dialogue and they are throwing apples of discord and uh, I think that this the, I can't tell any any solution to that but uh, we, we see that the, there are strategies to of non-dialogue of uh, non-discussion of uh, overblowing your statement in order to dismiss it and many many strategies that are to be observed in the social media that are very far from the dialogue and I think that with all the modesty we should while remembering about the past we should treat it as a challenge for the future because this is such a, a cognitive challenge for all of us that uh, probably this is an international effort to sustain the political system that we would like to preserve.
spent uh, only here in this very small fisherman village, which I probably wouldn't travel to because it's so far away from Vilnius. And so, but this forum is so interesting, so it's the reason to go here. And uh, all this intellectual um, forum is a very big, um, um, well, <laughs> attraction point to come here. I just realized that after spending those several, I don't know why now, I don't know why here, but after spending this particular weekend here, I reconsidered my feelings about the world and it just opened it back to me. And yeah, so it's not a thought, it's just uh, a, a emotion I was really experiencing while listening to you now. So. Well, it's about Ukraine, about Europe, and about what we're talking about. Hey. There is nothing better you could expect from this forum. But Čia tikrai yra žmonių, kurie turi, ką turi minčių ir gali kai ką pasakyti. Mes, aš jie, mes esu sėrinsime. But I'm asking in all seriousness, um, since we're uh, going to continue organizing uh, this for um, the next year and probably the year after that. And I'm sure there are people who do have ideas about future topics and things like that. And, um, I'm more than willing um, to gather those ideas. So, uh, there was some answers. Come from on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I uh, was not at the very first uh, uh, forums, 18 and 19, from what I remember. Uh, but then, you know, when forums were going, I would say that this one distinguishes uh, among all previous by having uh, had some interventions that were controversial. Uh, and especially, you know, since uh, 22 February, uh, discourse in Lithuania became more and more united. Uh, so uh, we heard uh, Last discussion was kind of challenge, you know, something like that, and that's about four narratives. I think was very uh, indicative, you know, very important for us to hear. I had no privilege to listen to uh, Chantal, Professor Chantal's uh, intervention, but I read it, and I think it's also very much needed uh, to understand the situation. And that's exactly, I don't know, we have uh, Syrian German, German journalist uh, whose uh, uh, impressions and something were, uh, I think, to many here against the grain of the skin. Uh, uh, so that's what we need in this forum. Uh, because to whom it uh, uh, dedicated, first of all, doctoral and postdoctoral students, of course, with larger uh, society as well. Uh, but the, here we had uh, just had a discussion, kind of exchange of different of opinions about think tanks of three people and whatever. So if there are think tanks, if we have uh, uh, intellectual uh, academic attitudes, we have to hear those who think very differently from us, and first to recognize that there are very different thinking, and it's not easy to to find and then here to accept it and actually to survive it when it's here, be behaving in a civilized way. Uh, what sometimes is a problem in Lithuania now with different opinions, we have to recognize it. Uh, so I would say I would like next forum here to be uh, more controversial. Thank you very much. Sure. Well, basically, Professor Irena just stole a bunch of my ideas, what I was believing I should say. Um, but 
Uh, I'm risking to be a quiet battle on, see, on saying the one thing and reviving that, but United in, uh, in Diversity is quite a motto. And uh, 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 as repeating the, uh, and overlapping the, a bit of previous uh, sentences, I would say that the challenge of otherness is kind of great in giant uh, for further thinking about things, about situations. And uh, in Lithuania, we are uh, quite having uh, a life in few bubbles. Uh, bubbles of political mindset, bubbles of uh, academia, and uh, uh, we are kind of closed and avoiding discussions. So when you are meeting some foreign uh, figures uh, from academia or from public uh, sphere, uh, then you are more encouraged because you don't have that uh, a kind of uh, a mark of kind on, on that person, and uh, I believe that's the strength of this forum and uh, particularly this uh, clear vision to speak about Europe and European things, not about Western civilization, but Europe, which is not only political uh, creature, behemoth uh, called European Union, but as well uh, European civilization, which is kind of different thing from the West, as, as Western civilization, when you think about that. So yeah, I believe uh, that different ideas are good, but uh, maybe those shouldn't be too much different. <laughs> I, I believe if we would gather uh, some radicals out here, uh, <laughs> if we would uh, exit the doors with more uh, pain and, 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 and problems in our mindset than before, so I, I believe we are uh, receiving great results, uh, results here. So there is controlled democracy and controlled difference, yes? <laughs> Everything is controlled by Big Brother. <laughs> Erdem Butukas, mėgint du kanos pasakyti. Čia, pavyzdžiui, aš tikrai žinau, vakar vakare toje linksmiausioje dienos dalyje. I know for a fact that last night, uh, uh, during the most fun part of the day. Tai uh, tikrai būta diskusijų apie ūsimo forumo temą. There are definitely were discussions about the topic of uh, future forum or next forum. Šiuo momento negaliu pasiūlyti nei viskio, nei vyno, nei net alaus. I can't offer you whiskey or wine or even beer right at this moment. Bet būtų įmanoma, tas gal, gal galit pakartoti vakarį šitas diskusijas. But maybe it's possible to just repeat what was already said yesterday. <laughs> I personally joined the NIDA forum or the second forum, it was in 20, 2019, and uh, basically I enjoyed it very much, each forum except maybe all the, the COVID, the COVID one which I missed, but uh, the one which I missed the most actually was the last year. Uh, and that was due to my other obligation mostly on the polish ukrainian border where I was engaged as a volunteer in Chemish these times. Uh, and uh, personally I'm very glad uh, to be back here and to uh, learn during the last year how to manage different tasks, being multitask, which uh, most probably I would never think even about before. So this is another war experience, I think, for me personally, but also for many of us that we are becoming more and more multitask and more and more open-minded. And as we had uh, uh, yesterday in discussion, as we refer to this, we got created slogan for this due to artificial intel intelligence, we are on the proper way. Or as one of the Polish politicians once said, we are close step, but with each step we are closer to trust. Thank you. Let's write this down. 
there was also a suggestion to um, give the opportunity to our speakers to ask questions to us and to each other if you had any. You can also suggest a topic for the next forum. Yes, of course. Can I say something while everyone else is thinking? I never get to speak here because I have to speak for everyone else. Um, but um, this year, um, and it's, as, as it sometimes happens, uh, there are a lot of coincidences and um, some of the ideas, or not even fully formed ideas, but kind of um, pieces of ideas that have been floating around me in my other work uh, for, for the past time have also kind of become very prominent in the presentations on this forum. And I think especially Chantal and Bernardes and the, um, the sort of attempt to define European civilization um, or European culture as a culture that respects a person or an individual. And you both in different ways spoke about solidarity and subsidiarity. And did you both quote Chesterton? Or, well, it felt like you could both quote Chesterton, right? And, uh, and I feel like I've gotten some kind of answer or expression to you know, distant ideas that have been fermenting because um, one of the books that I'm going to translate, um, which is my primary job, for those who don't know, I translate books, mostly fiction, but not always. So one of the books that I'm going to translate late this year um, is called The Wild Swans. And I can't pronounce the name of the author because she's Chinese. And it's like a biography of three generations of Chinese women, uh, starting with the author's grandmother, um, basically before even uh, Kuomintang, before even, uh, definitely before Japanese occupation, but even uh, in, in this Chinese feudal society, so to say. And ending with the author herself, who is now maybe I don't know, 70 or something. But it, it ends in, in the 90s when she finally escapes China and moves to live in Britain, I think. Um, so it's basically the, the 20th century in China. And um, one of the feelings that you have while reading this book is how no single person no single individual appearing in the book, they're not characters, it's not, they're real people, it's autobiography. No one is respected by others and no one is treated like a human being. I mean, some of those people um, get to high places, some of them are communists, some of them serve the regime, um, and the regime is kind of swinging there and back all the time. And the same people are in power today and in prison tomorrow. And then back in power, and then in psychiatric hospital. And then back in power, and so on and so forth. And um, mm, I was thinking, like, how is that possible? I mean, how, how do they take it? How, how can they suffer that? Why don't they do anything about their own lives? And I think that um, those considerations that um, Bernardes and Chantal, and I think the rest of us here, um, have provided, they really go a long way in explaining, on the one hand, why the Chinese people suffer their crazy government, but on the other hand, why do I have this question? Right? Like, why, why am I so bothered? But when they're not really bothered by that, Right? And why it takes the author uh, moving um, to Britain to be able to write this autobiography and to reflect upon all this abuse and disrespect and disregard that her family and everyone she knows 
sufferers throughout their lives. So I'm, I don't really have a form, formula for next year's topic, but I do think that this idea of how um, European civilization is the one civilization, or at least one of the very, very few civilizations and even cultural traditions, so that we cover a longer period of time, in the world and in the history, to really cherish and love and respect a single person so much. In most other civilizations, you will see uh, much less of that. Um, not everyone is so cruel and so nasty, uh, but in most of the civilizations, community is more important, right? A person is as good as they're useful and appropriate and fitting in and serving their community. And with the Europeans, it seems to be the opposite. Community is as good as it is useful and good and cherishing and kind to its individuals. So, yeah, this is no final conclusion there, but just um, my impressions and ideas here. I would just like to share a memory here. It happened a long time ago. Uh, very early seventies. I was a student at the time and I was walking uh, in a small Lithuanian town in the Šiaulė district. With my friend um, who was the headmaster of the school of the little town. He later became um, quite an important uh, figure in the Sajus and a member of the parliament. His name was also Antanas and his last name was Rachas. Uh, we walk uh, along uh, in the town and we meet a gang of um, six or seventh graders. That's like 12 or 13 years old. And so Antana says, well kids, what are you living for? And they replied, <laughs> as one for the society. And I was forced to remember this because um, I wanted to say that uh, this uh, was a society that I have experienced. And I'm very happy that if you ask a seventh grader or something like that today, you have no hope of hearing anything like it. But seriously, I agree with Gabriele and um, I have similar ideas in my mind as well, but we must also uh, think um, about literature here, or literariness. Uh, oh, literary expression of the topic. Okay, well, yes, Mintis could be a good forum, but they are not a man of a talk forum of a dinner. Because we can't um, just call the forum the human dignity, it has to sound better. 
Glavno pa veš, že Čestertov na sedem tri šel tukaj. So maybe it's um, Chesterton and uh, three exclamation marks. But it takes over. Ma na zrodo je Arturo na nore pozdravljati. Well, I would be very careful about self-glorification of European civilization. Because then we have to hear colonial countries. Uh, how was there with human di 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 dignity? Uh, we are uh, fatherland of racism, of uh, genetic selection. It's not all religions invented it, or on religious and all on this. Uh, uh, we have to think, uh, if seriously very much, we have to think about Christian anthropology that gives the same dignity, but also sees the same divine flame in every human being. And when listening to it, somehow, this young man who stands in the front of tank in Tainman Square comes to the, you know, to the mind. Uh, it's uh, about human dignity uh, and of many others. So I wouldn't go so much because the European Union is as problematic as every other civilization, culture or something. And then, you know, even concept of civilization is very problematic. Uh, so I would like something, you know, less retro, because it's retro, Chesterton is different, time before, before, you know, our recent experiences, because behind that and see, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but beside, you know, behind what uh, Gabriele is saying, you see, okay, us, Russia and China, uh, because Russia, we uh, already want to see something that is, you know, very different civilization or something like that. If being uh, conscientious and actually truthful, let's look more into some focus. Uh, either being human or something like that, because, you know, if we kind of circulating again Europe and my, a bit of mythical Europe, uh, I think Europe doesn't know what it is right now. I can see, you know, in Europe, in the international something, but actually, are we that Europe, you know, that John Paul II spoke about? Uh, we lived through, tried to try an effort to write constitution of European Union, Europe and European Union, and so on. So I just leave that skepticism here. But I really cannot identify with this, you know, Chester Tony in Europe and next forum. I think, or we invite really people from uh, south and from east uh, to participate in our self-perception. Uh, I, I don't know what happened to that man, you know, in Tainman Square. I just met Taiwanese, uh, you know, because Taiwanese diaspora is meeting also today in Vilnius uh, of all the world, 350 people from the Taiwanese diaspora. And I have to think, you know, that in many ways we have what to learn from them. Uh, to, about uh, their country, how understanding it, lots of sacrifices that they gave for it. They are not Europeans. They are not Christians. But the human dignity that they carry in themselves is incredibly strong. Uh, and it has nothing to do with Europe. So, altogether, but uh, I think it's also trying to expand our even human experiences, uh, if it's possible in this form. Thank you very much.
the finish of, of our discussion and I, I don't think that uh, I am dreaming very much. Uh, I, I strongly believe that it, it will come true in, 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 um, uh, in the future and uh, what, what I think about, what, what I hope, is uh, that uh, when in the future we look back on, on 2020s, we will see it uh, uh, this this decade as the time when we put an end to the discourse about uh, Eastern and Western Europe, uh, because um, I think I think uh, the the present moment is is uh, the best moment to see that uh, uh, we already are. Uh, are different. Uh, we we already passed that that stage. We uh, we uh, we have um, uh, we have uh, many things in common. We have uh, freedom of movement, and uh, and it it unites people uh, very well. And we have a we have a union where we make decisions together. And uh, actually, I don't think that we could be more together than than, than we are now. And and in a sense, I I, I think that um, we we could hardly be stronger together than than uh, than we are now. And and I think uh, we all we need is is this wake up moment when we start to see that that we are already together. And. Uh, and I think this this moment is very close, and uh, I I can feel it um, uh, in a way physically because even now uh, every time when when I hear about Eastern and Western Europe it makes me wince and and feel uncomfortable. So so I think we are really close. Uh, so now I must interfere again. Nes kaip tik apie tai mes Berusu Nikodemo kalbėjau šiandien. This is something that Nikodemus and I were discussing today. Mes kalbėjom apie tai, kad vienas du mūsų iš pirmųjų forumų buvo kaip mes statėme sieną ir kaip mes sieną griuojame. Because we spoke about how uh, among our first forums, two were called how we you know building this wall and tear down this wall. And but for the pandemic and the war, um, it's quite likely that we would have studied um, those things even more in depth. Bet mes apusų Nikodemus sutarėm, kad šiandien tų temų jos nebegalėtum kelti. Bet Nikodemus and I agree that today those topics are entirely irrelevant. Šiandien, jeigu taip kaip Bernardas siūlai, šiandien galėtų būti nebent pavadinimą senoje Europą, naujoje Europą klaustukas, jau nebe ne tikrai ne taškas ir ne šauktukas. Galėtų būti toks klausimas. So today we could only put it as a question what Bernardo suggests. Old Europe and new with a question mark but definitely not as a statement. And I think in such a title new Europe would have to mean not new members of the European Union for example but this all new constellation that 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 we are we are facing today i think it is something new it is something new for all of us and and uh, and that's that's why we can we can uh, how to say leave the old shoes behind as i would gladly support you but uh, forum of Bet aš kviesdamas kalbėtojus laikausi principo nenurodinėti, apie ką jis turi kalbėti. But as I'm inviting the speakers, I stick to the principle of not telling them what to talk about. Ir aš galiu puikiai įsivaizduoti, kad paskelbus tokią temą, mes turėtume ir to, ir to. 
And I can perfectly imagine that if we declare a topic like that, we would have both. Yeah. And it I, will be great. I understand that I, I, I almost already started to speak in the next forum. <laughs> May I briefly, uh, not all, not new, Europe's, uh, referring to what our last, uh, uh, refer, you know, referring to what uh, uh, Mr. Kirsch, Dr. Kirsch uh, say, uh, said, Europe's, not new and old, how many Europe's we have? We the rest. Uh, uh, not West, Europe's. Europe's. Where is Belarus? Where is Moldova? Uh, also Ukraine and uh, and Russia. Is there a Europe in Russia? Uh, so that would be maybe forum on many approaches and uh, and Europe's. Uh, then we have at least uh, one final note from Ukrainians. Because for such a long time people were speaking over us, no. maybe we can do not make that mistake with Ukrainians at least. What do you think about those talks about Europe's differences, security, safety, happiness, strong state, etc., etc., that we were talking about? Well, you know, in, in the Soviet times, maybe uh, some of you remember that uh, the biggest dream was American dream. And in Ukraine, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, American dream disappeared. I mean, because because of the problems of daily life. And from the end of nineties, uh, there was always European dream in Ukraine, especially among young people. And so, I mean, what is European dream for Ukrainians? It is actually security, social security, uh, minimal corruption, not maximum. Uh, uh, well, uh, I would say uh, reasonable and uh, uh, trustworthy bureaucracy, etc. So it's a very practical issue. So, uh, and uh, of course, I mean, the, the war made the Ukrainians also to think that uh, Europe is a refuge place, is a safe place in case of war. So, uh, I think now probably for, for Ukrainians, uh, safety is the issue number one. And Europe associates with safety. Uh, maybe we can all wish that to Ukraine. And with those wishes, I would like to end our discussion.